Hello, um, this is Chimichangas, right? Yeah, um, I'd like to book a table, please, for two. Yeah, I'll hold. Man, Conspiracy Cats is gonna be stoked about this. Yes, um, for next Wednesday, please. Um, about 7.30? Name? El Nombre. El Nombre. Some people really don't have anything better to do with their time, do they? I'll post a link in the description of the El Nombre video, kindly put together by a Mr. Chesick, in what I can only assume was a feeble attempt at trying to get to me. Anyway, today we ask the age-old question, Who would want to live on Earth when you can live on a super Earth? Hello one and all, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Flat Earth Friday. My name's Simon Dan, and I'll be your host. Yes, that was channel Celebrate Truth, run by YouTuber Robbie Davidson. He's the brains behind the Flat Earth International Conference, as well as the introduction of Logan Paul to the Flat Earth community. Seems odd, that one. In today's video, Celebrate Truth are reviewing a scientific video about the discovery of exoplanets. These are planets which we have discovered outside of our own solar system. To date, we've discovered over 3,000 of them. Oh, that, that reminds me, this gives me a chance to test the YouTube channel of Truth Paradox. Uh, let's have a quick reminder about what that is. I've invented something. It's called the YouTube channel of Truth Paradox. It states without exception that if a channel has the word truth in its name, then you can guarantee that the contents of said channel is a load of old cobblers. We'll reserve our judgment till the end today. Of course, alien life. Now we're getting to the propaganda, getting off of Earth and getting to these super Earths. Look at all the possibilities. I can sense a very thin veil of sarcasm in his delivery. He's approaching this video with an already formed negative opinion of it. I mean, who does that? Or, you know, plenty of places we could park our first interstellar colonies. But with so many options, how do we know which is best? You might think that most Earth-like planets should be at the top of our list. After all, we've got everything we need, water, land, an atmosphere, and trillions of life forms lapping it all up. But according to a small group of researchers, there are bigger and better planets out there. Oh, there's bigger and better planets out there. Now, first of all, the Earth is not a planet. One of the biggest lies. Oh, bloody hell, less than a minute in and he's confirmed the paradox. Oh, well. He did better than the last Truth Channel, to be fair. If you come to this video for the first time, please research it. The whole idea that we're just another planet and billions and trillions of other planets, it's just nothing but to make you insignificant, no value, you're just a speck of dust in the infinite galaxy. Well, you're actually both wrong and right here. We are but a speck of dust in an almost infinite universe. The universe doesn't really care about us. In fact, it tries to kill us 99.9999999999% of the time. However, it doesn't mean we're all insignificant, and we certainly do all have value, including you flat earthers. But again, this is where the rhetoric gets actually even more interesting when they put videos like this together and talking about super earths, better places to live than what we're on, this desperate notion that we need to get off. We're human. We just want to explore, that's all. There's no hidden agenda to try and make us move planets. We just want to explore and find out more about the universe. Let's continue. They're called Super Earths. Super Earths may be some of the most common planets in our galaxy. Since 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered about 4,000 exoplanets. 30% of them are Super Earths. So out of all the exoplanets, 30% of them are super Earths. Now understand that the super Earths are way better than even Earth. I think you're misunderstanding the term super Earth. It just means a large Earth type planet, which is bigger than Earth. It doesn't mean better than Earth in every way. 
it's not an Earth-type planet with a cape on that can shoot lasers from its poles. Okay, let's, let's forget about the fact that they're lying about space and planets. Just understand this idea that almost everything, 30% of everything that they've discovered out there is better. It's better to be habitable, better for life, better for conditions, better for atmosphere. Yeah, he's definitely misunderstood that, hasn't he? That's not like a flat earther, is it? As we'll continue on with this video, you're going to see nonstop propaganda when it comes to super earths. Who would want to live on Earth when you can live on a super Earth? And a few percent of those super Earths orbit within their host star's habitable zone. That's the Goldilocks zone where the planet's surface is just the right temperature for liquid water. The Goldilocks zone. Yeah, Goldilocks zone. Please tell me you've read Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Don't make me educate you on fairy tales too. Liquid water is just the start. These planets can be almost double Earth's radius and up to 10 times more massive. And all that extra mass is what researchers think could really make super Earths the perfect home. That's because more massive planets have a stronger gravitational pull. Super Earth Kepler 20b, for example, is nearly double the size of Earth and it's 10 times more massive. This makes its surface gravity almost three times stronger. That stronger gravity means that the planet can hold on to more air molecules and form a thicker atmosphere, which is great for protecting against harmful space radiation. You know, that radiation, the Van Allen radiation belts that they supposedly went through in the moon landings in the 1960s and 70s that Orion is still trying to figure out with their shielding, saying we got a major problem because we got lots of this radiation. Again, nonstop lies. Why? Why, 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 why? If space was fake and NASA completely made up, why would they say this is an issue? Why not just say space is real and it's not an issue to get there? I'll tell you why, Robbie, because space is real and it's bloody hard to get there and twice as hard to come back safely as well. Let's continue. It also means mountains and hills would erode a lot faster, leaving a relatively flatter surface compared to Earth. Oh no. Now that might sound boring, but scientists think this could actually spawn dozens of shallow islands all across the planet. So let me go to straight. A flatter Earth is better for life. It's better designed. It's very interesting that they would point this out, saying that these super Earths probably are going to be flatter and it will be better for life because apparently flatter is better. Oh, hang on. All of a sudden the video he's watching is right. It's not propaganda anymore because there's a 15 second segment that he agrees with. But I bet it'll be propaganda again in a minute when he doesn't agree with it. The hypocrisy is unrivaled. Leaving this tropical paradise would be extremely difficult. The escape velocity on Kepler 20b is more than double compared to Earth's, which means either rockets would need more fuel to reach their destinations, like for example, a mission similar to the Apollo moon landing would require twice the amount of fuel, or rockets would have to carry only a fraction of the payload. For instance, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy the big fake that sent out uh, a car into space that everyone believed was real. Oh yeah, that one? Yeah, that one. Clearly not fake, by the way. Can launch 50,000 kilograms of payload into Earth's orbit. Whereas it could only launch 40 kilograms into orbit around a super Earth like Kepler 20b. That's about the weight of a German Shepherd. Suffice it to say, leaving a super Earth would be a far greater challenge. So here they go with more propaganda. Obviously, they're trying to get off, but they're saying it's going to be difficult because of the atmosphere, because of gravity, because of all these equations that they put together. Equations that you clearly don't understand. It's another example of, I don't understand this, so it must be wrong. Otherwise known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Yes, Robbie, it's rife in the flat earth community. But again, you get to see where their agenda lies. This is kind of the place, obviously, in a galaxy that was created out of nothing, that was random. 
there would be billions of other better choices that we probably wouldn't be the only one. Again, this goes in complete opposition to the Word of God, to the Bible stating that the earth was created unique and special, and it was perfect in all of its ways for life. God created it. Again, it wasn't created by an accident, by a big bang, created out of nothing. But again, this is what the entire scientism narrative is all about, is reducing us to evolved from the slime. And there is his agenda. He's too scared to admit that he's part of a race that is essentially alone in the universe. I know it's hard, but I subscribe to the same words as Richard Feynman, who said, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in the mysterious universe without having any purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell, possibly. It doesn't frighten me. What a lovely note to end that video on today. Celebrate Truth rambles on for another 10 minutes or so about propaganda and stuff like that. It's all just nonsense. Thank you very much for watching today. Thank you to all the subscribers, the new ones for finding me and the old ones for sticking with me. I have been Simon Dan. Please do like and subscribe. This has been Flat Earth Friday and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we'll take a look at those ISS fails. See you all then.